<laughs> but you know what? I really appreciate what you said earlier um, because you know it, it's been really, really tough doing all that cutting year after year after year after year. I think it's been like six years in a row just cut, 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 cut. So it is an opportunity. But I really resonated with, with your point. In fact, I had a little plan B down here Linda, when you said that. I think that some of the things that, that you just talked about, Patsy, and some of the things we talked about really kind of touched what I was saying about keep your eye on the ball. I think it is an opportunity, but I think it's an opportunity to, to weave in the kinds of things we're talking about. Um, it doesn't have to be business as usual, and all they just said that, you know, even have some flexibility, we can how you get staff there. But I do think some of these issues like the period and the role of some of these kinds of things is an opportunity we may not get again in some during my time. You know, and so, um, you know, to have an opportunity to really craft in some things that we know work, work well, or that we're concerned about, and make sure that we try to do a good job of that, I think is, is an opportunity. And I would not like to see it, um, and I don't think it will be frittered away by not being alert and paying attention. I mean, I, that, that's really what my comments kind of led to, is not to just kind of just go, okay, well, it's just, it's just, oh, it's just such a good idea, it's just going to fly. Well, I think it needs to be nurtured. Mm -hmm. yeah, so. Sure. Just a comment. While we're talking about creating this, this um, high criteria level teaching staff at New uh, England, like point out that we have all very criteria teaching staff for our district. And I think we're going to have to be very careful when we talk about a certain why we have the criteria for the for a magnet school and why it is such it is as it is and how it's not the same across the district. Right. I'm not sure how you could, I mean, you know, there's a kind of push -pull I don't there. think that's hard at all. We have great teachers in every school, but this is why I don't think it's hard. It's because of what Tom said. You know, if you're in a school that then changes to a magnet, and you don't have a particular interest in that focus, it's not that you're a bad teacher, but it might not be the best fit for you. This, since we have no teachers there, we'll be able to get the teachers who feel they're the right fit for this kind of a school, and then hire the ones yeah, but that's not the same. We don't have the teachers in the TLC open. It's, it's it was a certain completely. Was, I mean, that was a certain different. teacher that was focused on computers back then. Oh, TLC, TLC. I'm sorry, TLC. Side. TLC. Side. And so the staff that was at TLC had that interest. Mm -hmm. But basically, we're going to be teaching a similar. I mean, we're teaching science. We're teaching math. We're teaching mm -hmm. everything that you're going to get in our our boundary elementary. Just with a different focus, but I think it's really important to make sure that what we're talking about is focused approach at, at a STEAM school that we don't that we are at the same time very intentionally talking about quality of teaching in our boundary schools because there are going to be a lot of people seem very closely to that. They're going to say, "Well, sure, we're the best teachers over there." That's not what we're doing. It's not no, necessarily no. the best teachers. Right. No, but any teacher who right. may leave their current school to go there, we right. want to replace with the very best teacher for the best fit for that and school. I, and, and I know we will. I'm just saying that I want us to be very deliberate in making that point every time we make the message. I mean, because that hit me the same way it hit you. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. But you know, I, I think that when you're talking about focus school, if I can just say, um, coming from a district that did focus schools, and also that opened up a brand new school, and um, a long time ago I was part of that brand new school that opened up as well, and they did have that exit clause in there, that after two years, if it wasn't a good fit, they could leave, no questions asked, and go back to their previous assignment. A focus school, you need, it's not, I, I'm not talking at all about quality of teaching, but I am talking about depth of passion. And you, 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 there are teachers who love to teach all subjects, and there are teachers who love to teach one subject more than another. I mean, they're human beings, and they have their areas of passion and love. And so when you, when you have a, a focus school, that that interest and that passion of that, 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 I think that that's what, I think that that's what this discussion is. It's not the quality of teaching, but it's the depth of passion for that particular focus. Just make sure you keep saying for that particular oh, focus. Oh, I, because, of course I will. Um, yeah. Depth of passion, I mean, you, you, it's not depth of passion know, for teaching, it's not depth right of here. passion for students, but it is, you know, I mean, it, it, it is yeah. a love of 
instrumental music, or it is a love of writing, or it is that one thing that you, you know, that you try to weave in wherever you can because it's just something that you're, that you're really passionate about. So it's, it's not quality of, of teaching, I don't, it, but it is. But I want to know that, that passionate teachers at the school down the block for me too. So you be really careful how you do that because even when you're saying it the way you're saying it, if I were a person whose teacher who has this passion that they're now going to go share at a different building is leaving my children and will not infuse them with that same little passion, I want to know that it, it's, that's tricky. It's yeah, tricky. but what about all the passionate, skilled teachers who choose not to apply for something like that? Exactly. exactly. I'm saying we have to really build up what we have in our district because we have that in our building. My fear is that as we open, every, every time we talk about RSI, we get a, a block of parents who are concerned that there is something so special about that school that their kids do not get. And it's not the case. It's different from what their kids get. But it's no less special than what they get at home. Somehow that uniqueness of something can be different without being better has to be conveyed to our parents and our community, for that matter, so that they understand that we're just at offering something different, and it will have a unique look to it, no less unique. I couldn't agree with you more. I think you've heard me say that time and time and time I'm going to say it all the time. You heard me say this about the sage of choice. Sometimes people make, have assumptions that I just shake don't know what I do. I shake my head. They think that just because something's different or has a theme that it's better. Yeah. And that's, that's often not the case. Just so good luck with that to <laughs> Okay, I, I wanted to time check and we're half an hour over our time. So I'm hoping we can wrap this up pretty soon. I still have my sheet of comments. Um, and I did I did look at you know the agenda and I knew we could go over on the subject a little bit because we are slated to finish up at 745. So I think that we're we're still gonna be okay and you know we're not gonna go through the hours of the night. Um, Linda, did you have one thing? <coughs> You know, we talk about what we're doing for the, the STEM, the STEAM magnet, but I think we also, you know, it's great to hear that we are training all of our teachers in was it, 30, 35 for in the STEAM, uh, STEAM, STEAM development, STEM development, which is great, but I think we also have to start thinking about what else we can do for the neighborhood schools. And I want to just put that out there and you know, we really need to think about what other things we're going to augment. And that was discussed in the committee. You know, that was brought up over and over in the committee also. And, and although someone addressed it already too, and you know, it's, the neighborhood schools are moving up there. Oh, absolutely. Houses. They've always been up there. Yeah. Well, I think it's the specific things like, I mean, that's kind of one of my questions about teaching and learning goal and some of the things we do because we've still got all the other things that people do in the middle school, uh, IB, units of IB, and the, now those teachers who are at Cooper have to kind of come. I mean, there are a whole lot of things that are going on. And so um, I think those things need to be talked about too. I mean, in just in the course of the day because when we only talk about one thing, then people get a sign up view. And there's a lot happening. I agree. I think it is important that we have talking points about um, what we have and we offer in all of our buildings. Yeah, the brand new curriculum, the trainers, the brand new curriculum. Right. right. And, and we have an elementary. Yeah. There's a whole list of school, things. Right. So yeah. focus school. Yeah. We have an right. IE. And then the Northport and Middle Lake has some uh, focus. Uh, that has shifted recently. Yeah, yeah, I thought there was a shift in that. But, but there are focus schools too. Right, and I think we just need to have those talking points mm -hmm. that yeah, even though important. they're opening a STEM school, we also, or a STEAM school, if it does go through, is that the other schools have these things too. Mm -hmm. So, you know, that's important that we uh, learn that. So, and I did want to say, I had a, I've written a few comments as I was thinking about this today, and one of the things I wanted to say is that, you know, we've been on the board a long time, a lot of us, and we've had a lot of public meetings about budget cuts, and I would have to say that probably at every public meeting we've had, and even other conversations that I've had around the community, 
you know, is the comment, well, what are you doing to increase enrollment? What are you doing to attract people to our district? What, it, you know, and that always comes up. Can't we be a vibrant community? Can't we be growing and seeing uh, an increase in our population rather than a de decline in enrollment? And I think that, you know, if you go back to the beginning of this, the name of this committee was Enroll Enrollment Enhancement. And I think they did great work. They spent a lot of time, a lot of hours, examining how are we going to attract people to our district and retain re the residents students we have that are leaving. And I definitely support this initiative. And I'll, I'll say that now. <laughs> I also think that when we hired Superintendent Sicoli, we talked about we wanted some initiatives. We wanted some innovative ideas. We wanted to be a forward-moving district. We wanted to be a district of choice in the metro area. And I think by offering choice, we become a district of choice. And so I think that I'm just, I'm really pleased that this has come forward. And then to me, the ultimate success I think of this school will be if we get families to move into this community. If they come and they open and roll into our community, they discover this is a great place to be and raise your children, and they come and buy some of these vacant houses that we have in our community, I know I have one or two on my block, and also, we have senior citizens, we have a big senior citizen population. They need to be able to sell their homes when they're ready. And I think that being an attractive district in the metro area with some pretty affordable homes is going to stem the tide of decline mm -hmm. enrollment or the ultimate hope is to increase our enrollment. And that would really be, if we had more people in our neighborhoods, more families in our neighborhoods, that's a win-win for our neighborhoods. It's a win-win for our cities. It's a win-win for our taxpayers because you have people filling your houses and um, paying taxes, so it's spread around more people. So I, I absolutely support this. Um, I did have on here my one line, I think it's important that we not just open the school and leave it at that. <laughs> that we do have to continue to monitor, have to continue to monitor, make sure it's successful. If we're not seeing the success that we are hoping and expecting, that we continue to look at ways to, to fix it or to change. And so I'm supportive of this, and um, does the administration need any more from us? I don't think so. <laughs>